Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today uh, I'm going to carry out a full service on my SRAD. Um, this is going to include uh, oil change, uh, all four spark plugs. Um, I'm going to drop the coolant and change that as well. And also I'm going to fit a K and N air filter to replace the stock item that's uh, currently fitted to the bike. First thing I'm going to do is strip off the side panels. Um, to give us access to uh, give us access to the engine, so we can drain the oil out, and take the oil filter off, and all that good stuff. Um, so let's uh, let's get on with it. Start off by removing all the bolts holding the fairings on. Once we have the fairings on, I'll make sure it's all nice and clean underneath. Give it a good, uh, give it a good clean down. I do like to think think it's clean underneath, even if I can't see it. This one annoys me because it's puckered the puckered the sticker underneath, but it's been like that since before I got it. Probably came out of the factory like that to be honest. It's a shame. Don't forget about the Phillips screws. Oh well they, in fact they won't be Phillips, they'll be JIS, but you get my uh you get my drift. There's one there. Another one up here. There's four, I think, all together. Yeah, there. Four all together. Okay. And there we go. Disconnect. Disconnect the wiring for the indicator. Obviously trying your best not to put your panel on the floor because that won't do it any good. Not too dirty inside here. Anyway, other side. Okay, so as you can see, now we have access to the oil filter. Uh, the sump plug is under here, just... The sump plug is just here with uh, easy access to it. So we'll get into that in a second. First thing I need to do is start the bike up, get the, uh, get the oil nice and warm. That way it will help um, with draining it out because it'll be nice and runny. Um, and we'll get most of it out. So that's what we'll do next. Uh, 
Okay, that's plenty. Um, plenty of warmth in the engine now. That should make the uh, the oil nice and runny. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to crack off the sump bolt, which is just here, 21 mil socket. There we go. Make sure you've got a good oil pan to catch it all, uh, because you don't want it going over your garage floor, or in my case, on the road. And then what we'll do, drop it out. Just like so. And recover, recover the plug from the bottom of the pan. It's not red hot, but it's nice and warm. So it's nice and runny. And as you can see, it's actually not a bad colour. It's nice and it's a nice brown colour as opposed to black, which uh, which I'm quite pleased about. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take off the oil filter. But first, I'm going to clean the sump plug and clean the tool. Okay then, to get the oil filter off, um, you can get there's loads of different tools you can get for this. Um, there's the ones that got like a cup that goes on and uses these spanner flats. Um, I've got one. In fact, I've got two, but they're both the wrong size for this. Uh, for this filter. So what I'm going to use instead is a strap wrench. Now a strap wrench is pretty cool. Um, I've got a couple of these actually. I've got um, I've got a chain version as well. But what it does is it will grip the filter like so. Um, and then all you need to do is when I find my ratchet, there it is. <laughs> okay, all you need to do is put the ratchet on. And as you tighten it, it grips tighter on the filter. Keep going. Grips tighter on the filter. And eventually, it will pull off. There you go. Just like that quite easy. Um, as you can see it does squash it a little bit but as it's an old filter that's kind of uh, irrelevant. As the filter comes off obviously it tips its contents all over the exhaust pipe which is uh, a bit of a pain but um, what we'll do we'll clean that off. clean up before I put it down on the floor. Let that drain off. Once that's all empty, uh, I'll give a clean up on the mate and faces for the new filter and then um, I'll clean up all this oil spillage. All right then, I reckon that's about all we're gonna get out of there. Let's give the, uh, give the exhaust a good, a good wipe over best you can you're not going to get all of the oil off however obviously the more you get off now the less it's going to smell of oil when you when you go to fire her up okay so then new filter um, i've opted for a, a genuine suzuki one um you know you pay your money you take your choice high flow people rate um but to be perfectly honest the difference in price between this and a high flow filter, I think, was about 90 pence. So I don't see the, uh, I didn't see the point in going with an aftermarket option, uh, albeit an aftermarket option that I can get the package open of. There we go. I didn't see the point in going for the aftermarket option when I could have just bought a genuine Suzuki one for hardly any more money. Okay, so let's stop that blowing away. Right then, what we need to do, I'll pop the old one into that package 
and it will stop the uh, stop the package blowing away if nothing else. Okay, what I'm going to do. Open up the oil, the reason for which. Let's get all this foil off before it ends up inside the bottle. The reason for which is because I need to dip my finger in and just put a little light smear all around the seal. And what that'll do, it'll help it seat against the face here of the, um, of the oil cooler. Um, and stop it puckering up because if it's dry it will it can pinch and pucker in which case it won't be uh, it won't be serving a proper seal so offer it up screw her on now you don't want to over tighten this all they need to be is up to touch and then basically as tight as you can get it with your hands you shouldn't need to install it with tools. If you do, you can physically damage the cartridge. And then you'll be having to replace it again. And there you go, that's nice and tight. Nice and tight, not too tight. But that shouldn't be, uh, that shouldn't leak and there's uh, a good seal between the uh, the rubber and the mating face of the oil cooler. Okay, next thing. Replace the sump plug. Okay, what I've got here is a copper washer which I have annealed. Um, always anneal your sump plug washers. Some people would argue the benefits, but um, the last thing you want is to fit your sump plug washer, get all your oil back in the engine, um, only for it to uh, only for it to leak um, when that could have been avoided by annealing the washer. Always get it in by hand. Don't go and uh, grull it in with tools straight away because if you strip it out, you'll be affecting a uh, hello coil repair, and you don't want to do that on a Saturday afternoon when you could be out riding the bike instead. Again, just give the exhaust a good wipe. This is obviously going to stink when I start her up, um, but it's one of, the, one of the pitfalls of servicing a motorcycle, unfortunately. That's just the way it is. Okay, that's as tight as I can get it by hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my torque wrench out and torque it to spec. Okay, the torque spec for the sun plug, 28 newton meters. Just talk her up. There we go. You don't want to tighten it over um, too tight because if you do, it's just aluminium, uh, an aluminium sump with a steel bolt, um, a steel, a steel uh, plug. Sorry, and you'll just strip it out if you uh, if you over tighten it. So now um, we're ready to add oil. Um, that's the filter done, a plug done, all the oil all drained out. Let's uh, let me go get a filter, um, a funnel, and we'll um, we'll top the oil, top the oil up. Okay, let's crack off the filler cap. Just pop it down to one side. Stick our funnel in. It, um, it doesn't go in that well because obviously the clutch is just inside there, but it's better to have it than it is not to because you're less likely to pour oil all over the place, um, all over the side of your bike and onto the floor. So now um, we've got an L line and an F line. Obviously what we want it at is the F line, um, no higher than that. Bearing in mind though, once we start the bike um, that the um, the oil filter will fill up um, and then the level will drop ever so slightly, but uh, it'll, um, uh, it'll only be a marginal amount and then what we'll do is we'll top it up. Uh, we'll top it up once, we, um, once we've got it at the point that we want it at. So let's go for it.
and I think what we'll do, we'll call that, we'll call that full. Okay, now I've just got to clean up any that I've spilt. A couple of drops on the side. Refit the sump, uh, the filler cap. Come on. Okay, and yeah, as you can see, we're at, but we're bang on the F mark. So once we start it, that should drop ever so slightly once it fills up the. Uh, once it fills up the oil filter, um, so we may need to give it a little top up, but it shouldn't be too too dramatic. It's probably only going to be about a funnel's worth of oil anyway. As you can see, I've spilt a little bit here, so let's get that cleaned up as well. One thing I do want to touch on briefly. Now, one thing I do want to touch on briefly is obviously I'm using my motorcycle specific oil. Now, there's people out there that will say, it doesn't matter what oil you use, car oil, bike oil, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's fine. If you want to put any oil in your car or your bike or whatever, your lawnmower, then by all means crack on. However, obviously this is my bike. I'll put in what I want to put in um, and I won't be told otherwise. So uh, don't bother uh, commenting about the, uh, the oil that I'm using because that is what I'm using. Okay, still to do is we've got the plugs and the air filter to do so. In order to do that, we need to lift the tank. But before I can lift the tank, we need to take the seat off because the hinge is about here uh, and the seat's in the way. So we'll take the seat off first and then lift the tank. Okay, so now we've got the seat off, we can now lift the tank. Okay, then with those two bolts out, we can now lift the tank with a piece of this piece of wood. I can support the weight of the tank. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to move the gear, uh, the uh, air box, so that I can get to the plugs as they are right down there. So first thing I need to do is take the top cap off um, and then work the way down till we get to the plugs. Okay, let's take the lid off the airbox and have a look at the filter. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad at all. There's a couple of little bits and pieces in there, but for the most part, it's pretty clean. Okay then, to get the airbox off, there's one bolt at the front. You've got the, um, the clamps on each of the, uh, the inlets for the throttle bodies, and then there's a couple of connectors around that need to be disconnected, and a hose at the back there. One plug, one vacuum line. Another plug here. That one was quite tight, there we go. That one's off. Off 
the airbox. Missed one vacuum line. There we go. And there we are. That's the airbox removed. So let's lift the tank back up, put a bit of wood back underneath. And there we go. Now, we can see each of the coils. All we have to do is pull each one out. Like so. Obviously it is necessary to remember the firing order. So if that's a problem for you, just make sure you take them off one at a time. Come on, there we go. Or just lay them. If you lay them like that, you won't go far wrong, will you? Okay, so what we've got down here is each of the plugs. What we need to do, whip each one out. I'm gonna give the top of this a bit of a clean as well. Um, the top of the uh, rocker cover gasket, uh, sorry, the rocker cover, give it, a good, uh, give it a good clean, and then whip all four plugs out and replace them. Okay, for this job, uh, use a spark plug specific socket. It's got like a rubber insert which helps you remove the uh, helps you remove the plug because it grips it, stops it falling out. They don't look too bad. Don't look too bad at all. As you can see, CR9E, CR9E, NGK, so like for like. No need to gap the plugs, they'll come pre gapped. Um, obviously, it used to be, gapping plugs used to be a thing, uh, not so much nowadays. And there we go, as you can see, it's holding it now. So, get it in, put it in, and start it up. Right, it's important at this point to note that you should never use a tool to start a spark, uh, to start a spark plug into, into the cylinder head. If you, uh, if you cross-thread it, you're gonna damage it. You are not going to cross-thread a spark plug into a cylinder head with your fingers. You just simply aren't strong enough. So don't use any tools, just do it like this. That way you know it's gone in and then um, we can uh, get it up to touch. And then what I'll do, I'll get all four in and then I'll come back and talk each one up to spec. Okay, spark plugs are only 12 newton meters. So, Not that tight at all, so you don't want to go uh, hanging off them. There you go, set to 12. Not much talk at all. This one, need a UJ. And there we go. So that's all the spark plugs changed. All we've got to do now, put the coils back in, get the airbox back on.
and there we go. Okay, so spark plugs done, coils all refitted. Trying to get the airbox back on. Obviously, what I've got to do, I've got to align the uh, ram air tubes with the airbox holes, um, and each of the throttle body inlets has got to go over each of the throttle bodies. I've got to remember that um, each of these hoses and connectors have got to be made. The first of which, obviously, goes to here, which is like a flapper control for the uh, for the airbox. So first things first is get the airbox back underneath the tank and connect up the vacuum line okay so now align the airbox over the throttle bodies and there we go bolt in at the front, get it started by hand first before we get any tools on it. Time. Right, around the back here we've got another vacuum line and the connector. And there we go. And this side, one more connector. Now, all I need to do, tighten each of the clips for the throttle bodies. This one screw does the two on this side. So you don't actually have to go through with a long screwdriver to get to the next one. Same this side. Okay, and that's them nice and tight. Happy days. Right, next thing to do, fit a new air filter. Now, what we've got here is a K and N high flow air filter. Obviously, these are um, reusable and rewashable and all that good stuff, and they've got like million mile warranties and what have you. Um, I was quite lucky in that I came, I managed to come across a new old stock um, K and N air filter. Obviously, the box has taken a bit of a bit of a caning, but um, you know, it's uh, good to go. They come pre-oiled, so it's just a case of popping it in. This should make it breathe a lot better. Um, and obviously when it comes to renewing it, I won't have to. I'll just have to clean it and wash it, uh, you know, wash it and get by one of those recharge kits. Um, I think I've actually already got one because I, uh, I use cutting ends in my cars as well. So, lid on. What I'll, um, what I'll probably need to do to take advantage of the uh, the high flow air filter is uh, get a power commander um, and then get it um, get it tuned to get the most out of it. Um, so that's uh, that's something I can probably get done this year. Okay, so that's everything we need to do underneath the tank. So we can lower it down. Take my piece of wood out. Put the bolts back in. 
Okay, so that's the uh, spark plugs done, airbox back on, tank refitted and bolted up properly. One more thing that we want to do uh, for the servicing of this bike is coolant change. Now, start the coolant change, remove the filler cap from the top of the radiator, pop that down there. What that will do is when we come to drain it, it allows air into the top of the system. Otherwise you get that glugging effect uh, and it's, it doesn't come out as effectively. Um, to drain the system, we're going to drain it from the front of the water pump. Um, to do that, what we'll do, we'll undo that tire out there and then loosen the Jubilee clip here. As you can see, I've brought back the trusty drain pan, uh, having emptied oil out of it. Okay, so that's nice and loose. All we need to do now is just break the seal. Break the seal, come on. They get glued on there over time. Here she comes. Come on. And there we go. Give that time to drain out. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my hose uh, and I'm going to flush the coolant system through with clean water. Now, I need to do that basically just to ensure that all the old coolant is out. Um, but uh, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, just basically by putting it into the into the filler cap on the top of the radiator, the one we just removed. Garden hose in there, and then just oh, there'll be clean clean water coming out of here. Uh, when it comes out nice and clean, then we know we've uh, given it a good flush out. So what I'm going to do is flush it through. As you can see, there's more there's more coolant coming out. And now you can see that it's starting to run clear. Yep, nice and clear. And that is the old, the old coolant. All the old coolant successfully flushed from the system. All I need to do is mop up all the mess I made around here. Okay, so. That's the system drained. Simply pop the hose back on, making sure it fully seats properly on both sides. Get the Jubilee clip back in the right place and tighten. Okay, one last thing we need to do. Is just drain the overflow reservoir.
hose back on and there we go that is all the coolant drained from the system now all we're going to do is uh, is refill it okay all that remains for us to do now is refill the system with fresh coolant um, i've got some pre-mixed um 50 50 this is the glycol based antifreeze um, i don't go into all um in for all this Evans waterless stuff, um, snake oil as far as I'm concerned, again don't get into it. Um, the way to fill it is to simply fill the system slowly, um, if you do it slowly it minimises the amount of air that gets gulped in. Um, fill it slowly until it uh, reaches the top of the filler neck on the radiator and then simply top up this bottle to the F-line and then start the engine. That is simple, uh, it is really as simple as that. There we go, what we'll do, we'll move the, uh, the intake um, tube uh, as that gives us better access to the top of the filler neck. Okay, using a funnel, um, obviously if you've only got the one funnel and you used it to fill up your oil earlier on, make sure you give it a good clean. This is a different one. Okay, using the funnel. Filler up until it reaches the top of the filler neck. Do it slowly though, because A, it minimises the amount of air that enters the system, and B, if you do it too quickly, all that will happen is when it gets to the top of the filler neck, it'll end up all over the floor. So. And there we go. Refit the cap. Just like so. Lastly, we want to top up the expansion tank to the F line. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the coolant changed. Now, um, when we start the bike up, what will happen is any air that's in the system will be bled out and it'll be pushed, it'll be pushed through to the system where it'll, it'll um, basically burp itself. Okay, so. All that remains now is start the bike up, get her up to temperature. As you can see, oil level's good. We know that the coolant's good because we just changed it. Brand new air filter, brand new plugs, brand new filter. Job it is a good one. So I'll go get the key, we'll fire her up and let her get up to temperature. While that gets up to temperature, what I'll do, I'll have a tidy up. Um, I'll put things like the ram air intake back on and then uh, look at getting the plastics back on. Um, what, I need, what I'm aiming for is effectively for the, uh, the fan on the radiator to kick in. Then we know that the, uh, the engine and the oil and everything is all up to temperature and we're all good. Okay, one thing we do want to do while, uh, while it's getting up to temperature, obviously you can see here the oil burning off the exhaust, but what we do want to do is we want to check the sump plug and around
down the oil filter just to make sure there's no leaks and everything looks good. Yeah, obviously this is all going to burn off, uh, so we'll leave the uh, leave the fairings off for the moment, let all that get out, and then um, once it's all burned off, it won't be a problem anymore. As you can see, the fan has now kicked in, so the engine is up to temperature. Got no leaks. And as you can see, the level in the expansion tank has risen. Obviously this is the, the low level and the full level, but that's at cold, so um, you would expect this to, to rate rise um, during operation of the motorcycle as, in, as it gets hot, because obviously the coolant expands. So, uh, now it's up to 10, I'm going to consider that, uh, consider that done. All that remains for me to do now is to get the side panels back on, lower it down. Okay, let's get the side panels back on and uh, I can call that a fix. Um, hopefully, you, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, vi uh, this video. Um, it's the um, first of a couple that I've done for the SRAD um, recently. Uh, obviously I love this bike, but uh, if you enjoyed it, then please um, give me a subscribe uh, and a like and feel free to comment um, and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, thank you very much guys. See you again soon. Bye-bye